Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a super awesome day. And I've done a recent video or two about um, kind of what I call a deep dive into specific filters. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of questions about those and some suggestions about other filters. Uh, even had people say, hey, do that for every filter. But uh, the truth is things like Accent AI, which are just a simple slider, or AI Sky Enhancer, also a simple slider. Doesn't make a lot of sense to do a kind of a deep dive on those because it's a simple slider. Should be a pretty boring video. Hey, look at me slide a thing. I'm done. Thanks for watching, right? So that would uh, be boring, uh, but there are a number of filters that I'm going to do this for, and um, I'm open to suggestions. So if you want to leave me a comment down below, let me know which filters you would like me to do a deeper dive on. Um, I've pretty much already done raw develop with both the adjust tab and the lens correction and transform stuff. Um, those videos I can put up here, uh, but those uh, those I did a while back. But there again, there's a number of uh, filters that I can cover, and I'll plan to do that. So today's video is about dodge and burn. So that's a technique whereby you can either lighten or darken specific parts of the image. So let's just hop into it. Um, once again, I'm starting with a gray piece of paper. Dodge and burn is a simple uh, uh, simple filter, I guess. You click on start painting and you come over here, you have either lighten, and when you're on lighten, you have a plus. So a lighten is dodging, so dodging is lightening, if you will, and darken um, is, is burning, or burning is darkened. So um, when you click on lighten, you see you have a plus in the center of the circle, and when you click, click on darken, and I've got a, a minus in the middle, you can also see that you can change the size. Um, so you can adjust that, and you can also adjust the strength from 100 down to you know as low as you want. So I'm going to go to 100 here just for example purposes, and for lighten, and uh, my size is at 100. That's just kind of random, and you can see it just lightens the photograph, right? Pretty simple. If I wanted to darken, I can just come over here. Again, I'm at 100. I just left the mouse at the same size, and there you go. You can always hit reset, which gets rid of all of it. Um, I can also, I'm going to go back to lighten a little bit, and I'm going to go back to darken a little bit, and then I can hit erase, and if I hit erase, I'm getting rid of that, um, and I'm getting rid of that, right? The thing is, sometimes it's hard to tell where you've painted and where you haven't, because the filter does not show you a mask. Um, so um, you got to be careful with the erase button. Um, you know, if, if you overstep uh, something between like a sky and a building where it's really light in the sky and dark on the building, it'll be kind of easy to tell. But in shadowy areas where you've lightened it some, and, and it can be hard to tell. So just be careful is really what I'm saying there. Um, and then, you know, when you're done, you're done. You also, let me let me go back to this so I can show you the amount slider. So lighten and then darken. Um, and that's a, just a random uh, stroke across there. Also, the amount slider is like an opacity slider. So you can see how that is affecting the image. And so as you lighten or darken specific parts of the image, you can adjust the amount overall by using that slider. So I'm just going to kill that because nobody cares. I'm going to say don't save and I'm going to get a photo. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to say start painting and I'm going to go to lighten. I'm going to go strength. I'm going to go about 60. No, I'm going to go how about 65. And size, I'm going to go bigger. I'm going to go something like that simply because a lot, a lot of the photo is dark. And so I'm going to come over here and start painting and lightening up the edges of the photo. As you can see, I'm doing that. The buildings are getting lighter, as is the street. And like I said, the thing I wish they had is a masking button so I could click and see where I've lightened or darkened the photo. I don't know how they would implement that, but it would be really handy to have. Uh, but uh, there's the before, there's the after, a slider before and after. You can see quite a bit of difference there in the shadows. So already I've had a huge impact on the photo. But um, the thing I like to do is just click start start painting. Now I'm going to go to darken. And um, the mouse is smaller here. And I'm going to say strength. I'll leave the strength at 64. And all I want to do is kind of darken that sky and a little bit of that background of that hill. This was shot in Heidelberg, Germany. Just some kind of random alley that I found kind of colorful and pretty. Um, but there we go. Something like that. And I'm going to say done. So once again, before and after, I'm kind of rearranging the light. Um, but again, you can always continue to say start painting and just click on it again and again. So I'm going to say lighten and I'm going to go strength and I'm going to go a bit higher. I'm going to go, let's say, 84. And I'm going to drop the size. And maybe I want to draw the viewer's attention to this cobblestone here. So 
I'm gonna lighten that a little bit more because um, I just think that looks kind of good. And, you know, again, it, as you can see, I've already lightened it quite a bit, so it's getting harder to tell where I've lightened and where I've had where I haven't, because the difference between what I'm lightening now, which is this strip of cobblestone, and the edges here, these darker cobblestones, it's getting a little bit harder to tell. So there's on and off, uh, there's before and there's after. You can see, I think I've done a pretty good job of rearranging the light. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I've actually got this photo um, I've already edited with that and some other filters just to show you how much more you can get out of it with a couple of more things. So let me get that and show you that right now. Okay, so here we are at the photo. And so once again, there's the before and the after. You can see again, you can tell pretty easily. In fact, I'll do this slider. It's easiest to tell right here. You can see how much darker the sky and the mountain in the background is on this right hand side and how much lighter the street is versus the left side where the street is dark and the sky is light. So again, I basically rearranged the light, uh, but you know, um, it's not a filter to be used necessarily by itself, depending on your taste. My tastes run a little bit on the artistic side, as you may know from previous videos. So I like to add more stuff. So I usually stick a couple more filters on here. Accent AI came in handy, um, added a nice little boost of uh, brightness there. And then I came in with tone, added a little bit of contrast, took down the highlights a little bit more. So there's the before of tone and the after. Again, just trying to craft the image the way I like to craft it. Brilliance and warmth was next, and that was, as you can see, just a little bit of vividness, just 11. All I did is just bring up that color. So there's the before, already fairly co colorful, and there's no color edits at that point. Some of that, um, when you increase the contrast, you can see that the color starts to pop a little bit more, which is what I did in the tone filter. But then I added brilliance and warmth just to give a little bit of that. And in fact, I might even warm it up a tad. Um, I like that pop of yellow, and um, I don't want the these cobblestones, um, especially in shadow, will have a tendency to get really blue or kind of purple, depending on what you're doing with your colors. And adding that little bit of warmth, uh, I think helps that a little bit. So there's before brilliance and warmth, and there's the after. Again, kind of subtle, but a nice little pop. And then last is really just a vignette. Um, and as you can see here, I did a place center and I kind of placed it at the end of the alley, which is not the default. The default is dead center on the photograph. I put it over here a little bit, just because I want to draw the viewer's eye down the street. Um, so you might be saying, well, Jim, all the editing here is really all the other stuff. And you know, a lot of the editing here is the other stuff, but let me show you if I turn off dodge and burn, what the photo looks like. It doesn't look nearly as good. And so that's the power of dodge and burn. And that's actually including accent AI and tone, right? Which can be used to brighten a photograph. Now I didn't use smart tone here, uh, which I would normally do on a photo like this, uh, but I didn't need it because I was using dodge and burn. But brilliance and warmth and vignette helped quite a bit. But dodge and burn, here it is with dodge and burn, huge impact on drawing the viewer's eye down the photo. And I think it's one of the reasons it's very powerful. I admittedly don't talk about it a lot and actually don't really use it a whole lot um, because I tend to use other things, Accent AI, Tone, where they may be a little bit quicker, but they're not as precise in terms of, you know, they're, um, they're like a broad brush, uh, like a broad brush stroke, Accent AI and Tone for brightening an image. They do a great job of it, but Dodge and Burn is something that gives you a lot of control that you're not really gonna get with those other filters. And so if you wanna be a bit more targeted and specific, I think Dodge and Burn is a great filter for that. So once again, before Dodge and Burn, but still having used Accent AI, Tone, Brilliance and Warmth, and Vignettes, you can see all the filters are still on on the other side. And adding Dodge and Burn really, I think, gave it that little bit of extra oomph that I think makes the image pop and completes the image, in my opinion. So at this point, I'm done with the image despite having many other filters at my fingertips, I feel like I'm done. And a lot of that came from Dodge and Burn. So one more time, here's a slider left to right, massive light changes, sky's under control, uh, the, the foreground and the walls have been brightened considerably. And I think it looks a lot better before and after. And that's the power of, uh, of Dodge and Burn. And that was a quick deep dive. And I hope it helped my friends. Let me know if you have other filters you want me to jump into and I'll do that um, as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. Have a great one. Take care, my friends. I'll see you later and adios.